The Mentors were formed in Seattle in 1976 as a punk and metal band by El Duce, Ethan Scum and Sicky Wife Peter. Eventually, the band relocated to LA and signed with Mystic Records. On their lyrics delved into themes of sex, rape and drugs with titles such as Suck for Rent and Turn You into a Lesbian. <laughs> Mr. Steve Roy, Dr. Ethan Scum, The Mentors, Kill Alan Ranch, and Church of El Duce. When you were at work, did people know that you had a controversy then when you got famous? I yeah, I didn't really go out of my way to tell people, but some people did find out about it, yeah. But it never caused me any real problem at work, thank God. But yeah, one time I was this high executive at this, uh, I was giving some presentation at a corporate meeting, and this guy goes, hey, aren't you the guy that got in trouble with the U.S. Senate for porno rock and stuff? I said, uh, no comment on that. It was funny. Let's get to the El Duce part, some stuff about El Duce. Uh, the place where he, he was uh, interviewed for the curtain, um, and Kurt's documentary, that house, it's your house, right? <laughs> it's my house in Riverside, California. I still live there, in fact. And yeah. he was living with you. He was in, in the... <laughs> he was couch. He was in the garage room, yeah. I was staying in the garage room. It was great, man. He was the best roommate ever. Really? Yeah, because he's just a party every night, man. People come by and constant party with him. Plus, we could record in that garage like crazy. And I think he seems like he was an, a really nice guy, except when he was drunk. Oh, yeah, super nice. Yeah, really cool. it's, that, that's, it's that the case, right? He wasn't the rapist, uh, bad person, right? He was cool. No, I wasn't a rapist, apart from sleep bandaging chicks. So you, you lived with him, you had parties, uh, he was, he was funny? <laughs> he, I'm, oh uh, yeah, super he funny. He used to go out and panhandle in Hollywood with the signs and tell jokes for a quarter. Can we talk about the, um, the Cobain situation? <laughs> There's no problem talking about that. Oh, sure, I'll talk about it. It's all bullshit. It's not real true that he was approached by Courtney Love. But people want to believe what they want to believe. The, the situation started with uh, Reverend Bud Green. Yeah, that's the guy who started it all. He, he's, he, his name is Norm. I think it's Norm Bo. I, I don't know. Lubo, yeah. L U B O W. Yeah, he still he still says on Facebook that Alan Ranch killed El Duce and that El Duce uh, was offered money to kill Cobain, and that's really crazy. There are there's a lot of people still believing in that, and it's it seems really crazy. You've got that guy from False Alarm, the guy that did the interview with El Duce and Alan Ranch. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Ren Alden, yeah. Yeah, 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 his name. I've checked his Facebook and he's still saying the same shit, but he's also saying that the CIA is after him, so I think maybe... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's like conspiracy theories. You don't know what's true and what isn't. It's so funny. So, Bob Green started the whole stuff, but what? Wh why did El Duce say... The Alan's name. When El Duce told his name, did Alan Ranch uh, knew he was a part of it? He said like, "Hey, tell my name," or it was. Yeah, it was pretty much, pretty much, he wanted to be part of it. Yeah. So he was encouraged Duce to say stuff like that. A guy who liked to party, also Alan Ranch is a guy that likes to party and just went full in <laughs> on the story. Yeah, he wanted to get in on the story. 
He got it on her pretty good. A lot of people think he killed Kurt Cobain. And I, okay, now that you confirm me all the things that I uh, already s assumed that it was like that, and it's cool that it was, uh, creating Kill Allen Ranch, in my opinion, is like one of the most brightest things ever, how you managed to create a whole project uh, based on what the Nirvana fans were <laughs> were telling you. I think that's really great. How did you come up with that? How, how did you get that idea? Oh, one of my idea was his idea. He was in a punk band called Road Whore. Before that, it was a popular band. Yeah, band tell me the name again, please, Dr. Van. Road Whore. It was called Road Whore. But then it broke up because the singer got paralyzed and the guitar player got some woman and stuff. So he wanted to form another band. That's what he did. He asked me to play guitar in it, which I was glad to do. But it was his project. He wrote all the songs, pretty much. I wrote a few of them, but he wrote most of them. He, he used to give parties at his house, right? On the backyard, punk parties. Is that true? Yeah, he had big parties all the time, Super Bowl parties and Christmas parties and stuff like that. And El Duce, when he was alive, he, he went to that parties also, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we moved out to, Cal to, to Riverside in about 1991 or something like that. When somehow or the other, I can't remember how, we ran into Alan Ranch. He goes, hey, man, I'll give you a plumber if you ever need any help with plumbing. Give me a call, and then the next week, I had a big leak in my foundation of my house where a pipe burst. So he came over and fixed it right away. It was really cool. So we became good friends after that. He'd come over all the time and hang out with me and Al and jam with us and stuff. So a couple of times we put a hood on him and had him play bass. He wasn't sick, he couldn't play guitar, so I played guitar and then Al and play bass. One time we played with that band, uh, let's see, what was it band? Was it? Oh, Sublime, yeah. We were playing in some place with Sublime in uh, Orange County. And then uh, Alan was all drunk and stupid, and he pulled the fire alarm in this hotel we were playing at. It caused a lot of problems. Alan is almost not not like El Duce, but he is also a, a serious character. <laughs> I've, I've noticed. Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. When he was younger. He was really alcoholic. He's not so much of a boozer now. He still drinks, but doesn't get crazy like he used to. Let me just show another more another clip. Uh, you, yes. you're with with Alan with Kill Alan Ranch. You you went to the to the lead guitar. So I'm showing just a little bit of that. Okay, so this was cool. You 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 like the to, to change to the guitar? How was that? Yeah, I was originally a guitar player. I started playing guitar before I played bass. I always enjoyed playing guitar. I was good as sicky, but I could play. I like to play. I like to write songs and stuff. You toured with the mentors. Did you ever came to Europe with the mentors or only with Kill Alan Ranch? Uh, before no, Kill Alan only, Ranch? Well, since over the years since Duce died, I played many European tours. I just completed one. In uh, d December and January and part of February, we played all over Europe. We played, see, we started in the Netherlands, then we went down to France and Germany, then Italy, then up to Austria, then back to the UK, then over to Stockholm, Sweden. We went to four shows in Sweden, then we went to Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and Poland. It was a great, really good tour. So we played a bunch of tours over there. Probably, probably about the 10th tour we've done in Europe since 
Yeah, we never played Portugal, though. We want to play there soon. We, we are a small country, one of the smallest in Europe. But we have, a, a, regarding alternative music, we have a lot of people listening to some alternative stuff. And uh, there's a lot of people listening to metal also, more than punk. So your sound is punk and metal. We, you have listeners here for that, for sure. For sure, you have. Uh, yeah, great, yeah. Gigi Allen, you, everybody knows Gigi Allen, of course. Uh, a few people know El Duce, but a lot of people know Gigi Allen. Uh, I understand, and, and El Duce said that on an interview with that guy from False Alarm, uh, that Gigi Allen uh, learned with him. Uh, and regarding that, I'm going to show you a video, uh, a small clip that I uh, edited. Uh, and then I'm going to ask you about that. Uh, it's regarding yeah. Gigi Allen. Uh, let cool. me just... The first time I saw him, I decided it was just a fact. The thing of it is, in rock and roll, there can be no limits. Well, he had saggy makeup on, had long hair, he had lipstick on, rouge. Check out these girls right <laughs> Because in, in 85 and, and in 86, Gigi Allen still wasn't the crazy Gigi Allen we know now. But El Duce was already, and you guys, all, all of you, were already singing about rape. And, and uh, you mentioned that El Duce allegedly uh, did poop on stage. And, uh, on stage and, El, and El Duce said on that interview that Gigi Allen saw him taking a poo and taking a pee. And then when <laughs> El Duce saw him again, like after a year, uh, Gigi Allen had cut his faggy faggot hair and had put a, a beer <laughs> like El Duce and was just throwing shit everywhere and talking about raping him. <laughs> I think it was a big influence, yeah. Mentors definitely influenced Gigi for sure. But Gigi was over the top. He was over the top because the first time we, I learned of him, we were on tour, we were playing in Texas, and we were playing like in Abilene one night, and the club a little early, and the, the sound guy at the club says, hey man, you're not going to believe what happened here last night. This guy named Gigi Allen came out of here, and he, his brother got up on a ladder and sucked it. What the fuck? <laughs> and then, then I didn't really pay any attention to it because I never really even heard of Gigi at that time. We went to the next show the next night in Dallas or somewhere. It was the same thing. We were following him around. This guy goes, you're not going to believe what happened here last night. This guy got a blowjob from his own brother on a ladder. I said, well, it must be true. True. And okay, <laughs> that, that that's really sick, man. Fuck. And I, I I'm saying sick in in a, in a, a, a sick way, not in a good way. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was sick, but we got good attention from it. Well, dude would regularly take a shit on stage. He just one time he did one of the blackie bar and grill in Hollywood. We were playing a show there on like a Tuesday night. Nobody came to the show, maybe five people. And after the show, Gucci went out and took a, a drum solo and then he dropped some prune flakes so he called them from his asshole and dropped them on his snare drum or something like that. That was his idea to take it. How do you think El Duce, you, you lived with him, you, you knew him well, how do you think he will be to them in this society, that it's more progressive? And... Oh boy, I'd be a call for him if he was still alive now in today's cancel culture, it would be difficult for him. I don't know, I don't know. maybe it's better if he dies, it wouldn't fit in so good. It's a shame he did die, though. Wish he didn't die, but 
sometimes it's just not your time to be alive. He, he didn't seem to care much about dying or not, for what I saw. No, he didn't give a fuck. Yeah, <laughs> it seems like that. Yeah, it seemed like that, yes. Okay, so I, I have some more questions, let me just check it out. Uh, I am, I'm showing you another clip uh, about the concert of the mentors in 2012 uh, because you, you, you kept, kept the band going on and you did, and the sound was really good. You had more, more, uh, you added another, uh, how do you say, musicians to the band uh, and the yeah. sound still yeah. remained pretty cool. So I'm, I'm showing them in 2012 in the punk picnic. Uh, I don't know where it is, but it... Oh, Punk Rock Picnic. Right, that was in California. It, yeah, it's the Punk Picnic in California. That's right. I'm just trying to find out who... who is... No, this is the GG one. It's this one. Fuck you bitches! I hate the mentors! Fuck up! Fuck up! Fuck Fuck up! So it's cool that you you guys are still playing. Uh, did, did the people? How do you see? How do, did you play um, every year since uh, Eldritch's departure? Yeah, pretty much. Have, yes, we slowed down a little bit right after he died. I had a few gigs booked after he died. We played the next weekend after he died. Strangely enough. But then uh, two or three other gigs booked, and the other guys didn't want to show up for them, so they kind of petered it out for a while. But we got back in the swing of play pretty quick. What was, what was the, the most embarrassing, uh, embarrassing uh, situation you had on your life uh, regarding the, the mentors or the, the, you playing in a band with uh, that kind of lyrics? Do you remember uh, uh, that was really embarrassing? You have to explain. Oh, it's just satirical. Well, I don't really remember embarrassed by it, but I do remember getting thrown off the, the stage a few times. One time we were playing at a place called the Lost Nightclub in Tacoma, Washington. It was one of our first gigs we ever did out of Seattle. It turned out there was a, it was a five-year-old's birthday party at a pizza parlor, and the guy goes, stop, you got to go. He kicked us out and paid us $50 to leave. Okay. I, the sound is cutting again. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand much. Uh, but, but you told me uh, Siki has uh, health issues. Is that right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay, that's why he's not playing. Okay, okay. Okay. He was a sick guitarist also. He is a sick guitarist also. And you are a sick He's guitarist. He's an amazing player. guitar player. Yeah. Actually, the, all three of you of the, the first Mentors Incarnation are really great musicians. And that, that's what's more impressing, impressive because you, you have the satirical stuff that's really cool. And then you actually can play. And that... For me, that's the difference between you and then Gigi Allen. That's the main. For me, that's the main difference. I don't like Gigi Allen's songs, but I like the mentors. But that's me. Yeah, that's what we prided ourselves to write original music that was cool, I had good riffs and good choruses and hooks and stuff like that. So I really tried to do as a songwriter. I have uh, I have your uh, last question, but you already mentioned it. Do you do you think if if some way the mentors went viral now for some motive uh, and all the the the, the world will, will focus on your band, what do you think <laughs> will happen with all this cancellation? We well, get in trouble, more trouble than we normally get. It'd be good though. It'd be fun. 
I don't mind being canceled, but it's kind of crazy. Look at what's happened with Puff Daddy now. He's getting canceled. They're canceling Kanye West, Puff Daddy. All the rappers are getting canceled now. Which is okay with me because I don't really like rap much, but... Rap, rap now is more mainstream than rock, so the focus is on the, the rappers. <laughs> People don't, don't care if the rockers do <laughs> the same shit. <laughs> Have you noticed that uh, in this last decade, uh, there's more people seeing rock or less people seeing rock or the mental. Well, for us, it's about the same, maybe. Because we don't really... We still have a bunch of hardcore fans that will come out and see us when we play across the U.S. or Europe and stuff. But we don't really notice it really going up or down that much. But I think overall, the volume of it is going down for rock and metal and punk and stuff. It's not really as popular as it used to be overall. Why is that happening? Do you know? Do you have a thought? Well, why is it happening? It's just because no, there's no bands that do deliver anything that's any good anymore. Very few bands that are intriguing. I, I can count like the number of bands I like to see on about two fingers. The only, the only ones I enjoy seeing are Ted Nugent and this band called Jackal out of Atlanta. About my only favorite bands I go see now. Of course, the Rolling Stones, I like to see them. The Who are good, but yeah, it's just there's not really any good. You don't like the, those 90s California bands like No FX and Rancid? <laughs> it's not my cup of tea, not really. No, it's not my thing. I don't really. I don't want to say nothing bad about them, but it's not what yes. I'm listening to. You also sell albums and your book on Facebook, right? If people call, contact you at Steve Bry, I will write it on the, the, the description. Yeah, they can buy, I sell all of our albums. I got To the Max, I got a few of them. I got Vinyl, I got a Game 5, I just rock pop. I think we're done here. It was nice to talk to you. I, I Thank you so I much. So appreciate, much. The, appreciate the interest in the band and the support. Uh, so I thank you. And the, did, did you watch the, the movies about the mentors on my channel or no? Yeah, I did. They're yeah. great. Yeah, really well yeah. done, man. Well done, man. Okay, okay, okay. They're, they're good. They're, they're not, uh, not no, no lies. <laughs> it's all okay, right? Oh no, it's great, great. Oh, it's great. Thank you. Okay, 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 okay. No, I thank you. I thank you for for because I I always uh, I try to do the research well done. When I I'm 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 doing some random stuff at the house or something, and I start singing the mentors the crowd with true sex from nowhere uh, because it's really good. <laughs> so I uh, I really like your both both of your bands. I really like and. That's why I, I wanted to interview you, not just because of the Cobain situation, that is also something that I was interested. I've already done the, the Kill Allen Ranch video with the Cobain stuff, so it's not, uh, it wasn't something really important to talk about, uh, but it's cool to, to know that it's all, all a big troll. And like um, Tom Grant, that is the major specialist of the, the Kurt Cobain situation, uh, he said that the Alan Ranch is the biggest hoax in rock history. So that's the biggest hoax <laughs> in rock history. <laughs> okay, Mr. Steve, thank you. Uh, thank and you we'll, very much. We'll Take stay care. in touch. Okay, yeah, goodbye. Goodbye. Good